All right, up to this point, we've been using uh, complex models to kind of show off what kind of cool images you can make. And that's always my default is to try and make something cool. Uh, but for these next things we're going to talk about, we're going to simplify this a bit. And we're just going to grab a sphere to kind of demonstrate on. Now, again, we went over this before, but if you want to save this, you can do a quick save. That's nine on your keyboard. You can do a file save, and that'll save a Z project. That'll save all your BPR settings. You can go up here and do a render save and save a render set, just so you don't lose all the work you've done up to this point. Because what we're going to do next is hit the comma key, go into our project, and we're going to go into the NPR projects. And let's go ahead and do this cartoon render 01. Go ahead and open that up. And now we just have a sphere on our uh, canvas here. Now, of course, in order to do BPR filters, we know we have to do a best preview render. So let's go ahead and hit that button. And we got a nice render. And if you go over here to our BPR filters, and if you haven't done it already, uh, if you want to open up this little docking station on the side, if you're just joining us, and then you can go over here to your render menu and you just drag that little white dot over here and then go down to the very bottom. Well, not the very bottom, but the middle-ish uh, where it says BPR filters. And we have a filter selected. Nothing's turned on. Uh, but what we can do is this F1, we have it selected so we can see it. And then we can click this little open arrow. And now we have noise applied to our overall image. So we're going to change that filter from noise. Then we're going to talk about texturing. You can see we have texture here. We have texture overlay. Down here we have some overpaint texture. So that's what we're going to get into next. Uh, they have some very similar uh, things we need to talk about. So we're going to go into texture here. And in order for it to do something, what you need to do is go down here to this little texture spot here and just load in a texture. So you can load in anything. We just grab this texture here. And it's going to put a texture all over our image. And this very first part right here, it says texture 50. If you drop this down, uh, that's going to be fewer versions of a drawn of texture zero, just one texture filling up your entire screen. And texture 100 is just a bunch of textures all over your uh, screen here. Of course, you can drop the opacity down if you'd like to. You have a back and a front color, and that's going to change the gradient um, on this one. Let's see what it does. So we got red as our back color, and then again, bright orange is our light color. So that'll go, it'll, it'll be a gradient as well to go from red to a bright yellow and everything in between. So you see some oranges in there. And it's a little bit more obvious if you grab something, it's like a grayscale image. So let's go ahead and choose this one. We'll bring the texture down so you can see it a little bit better. So now this is just a texture all over our entire image. And you can see there's these little transparent areas. Go to the modifiers and change that transparent black to zero. Um, I mean, the more you crank this up, wherever it's black in your texture is where it's going to be transparent. So you can use that to your advantage. In this case, though, I'm going to take that transparency and turn it to zero. If you want to see this texture applied to your object, or if you want to apply this texture just to your object, remember, you can go down here and you can mask it. And in earlier videos, we talked about all these options here, or most of them. So we can take this mask here and set it to one, and now it's just applied to our object. Of course, we want to see our object through our texture. And let's go ahead and raise that texture up so we can kind of tile that a little bit more. Um, ideally, your texture is tiling. Um, we can talk about making tiling textures within ZBrush. It's pretty fun. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to be loading images in here. Uh, one way to do this is to change your blend mode. So you change this to multiply. You're going to see that it'll uh, multiply this texture on your object here. And underneath the modifiers here, uh, you can change the base orientation. So if you want to rotate this orientation around, you can kind of just rotate it on uh, several degrees. And you're also going to see an orientations count. So as I raise this up, you're going to see it's going to take, if I click to go out of the BPR render, you can see we have a light area here and a mid gray and then a darker gray and a shadow. Uh, we hit BPR again. You're going to see each one of those is being broken up into a different orientation. This can be kind of useful. So let's Let's load up another alpha uh, that might be able to be used. So we're going to go into our alpha section here by hitting the comma key, go into your alpha section, and you're going to see under alphas, there's an NPR folder. And in here, you have some cross hatching and stuff. So let's go ahead and take that alpha cross hatch tiling. And if you double click, that's going to throw it into your alpha folder. And if you take this alpha folder and you say make a texture, now you can go into your texture here and you have alpha cross hatching available to you. Go ahead and select that. And now we can make this a little bit smaller by taking our texture and just raising it up. So we basically have this cross hatching uh, happening and we still have our modifiers here. So we take this orientation cast down to one. We're essentially just seeing this cross hatch go through our object. And this is tiling. So the more I tile it up, the more it's going to be cross hatching through. Uh, and let's go ahead and change this back to like a black and then a white for your back and front color. And then we go into the modifiers here again, you can just rotate the direction that those cross hatches go in as well as that orientations count. Every time it hits a new luminance value, it's going to switch the orientation of those cross hatches. Now, again, if I go out of the BPR render, you're going to see this is a very stylized render. We talked earlier about in the material modifiers how you can make this very stylized going into your diffuse and your specular curves and going ahead and changing that. However, if we go to something that has a lot of gradient, like the matte cap gray or the gold, the green metallic, if you change it to something like this and then you hit BPR, you're going to see now we're getting this. So every time 
it sees a gradient shift, it does a new orientation. And you can keep cranking that orientation factor up and getting really, really neat effects like this. And all we're doing is taking this alpha here, tiling it down, and of course you can lower or raise the opacity as much as you need to. And then going to your modifiers, changing the base orientation if you want, uh, transparency, black if you want to, and then the orientation count, just changing this to get the effect that you're looking for. Now the next one we're going to move on to is texture overlay, but before we do that, I want to go ahead and show you the difference between a filter texture with overlay blend mode and then the actual texture overlay. So we're going to go ahead and switch back to Skin Shader 4 at BPR again. Let's go ahead and swap out this texture. In fact, you know what, let's go up here to Reset Filter. Go ahead and grab this texture 39 here. Let's go ahead and change that mask to 1, so it's just applied to our object. And let's change this blend mode here to Overlay. Now let's go ahead and copy this and then we'll go ahead and go to F2 and we'll say paste. Now let's turn off F1 and on this one instead of doing a texture with a blend mode of overlay let's go ahead and go down here to where it says texture overlay. So what this one is doing is making a bump effect based on the medium intensity of your overall image. So it's going to take the darker values and push them into your model and then the lighter values and kind of pump them out of your model and make it look like the texture is actually applied to your model as opposed to the texture one which if we turn this one off and turn this one on, you're going to see it's just kind of a texture that's overlaid onto your image here. So this one kind of gives you more of a 3D effect. With texture overlay, you still have all of the same features. you got the back color and the front color. You've got modifiers here. You can change the orientation, the transparent black, and all that good stuff. But in effect, you're just getting a more 3D effect when you use the texture overlay filter as opposed to the texture filter with an overlay blend mode.